Yeah, I can imagine it's a very intense discussion yes, and yes. one that uh, the world is uh, following. Already been said that energy accounts for two thirds of total greenhouse gas, but many people might not know this. Global food supply actually accounts for nearly a third of global emissions and will be, from what I understand, a major focus of COP28 as well. I, I know you're very passionate about trying to create a sustainable agriculture that will be resilient to changes in climate. Uh, that's something that you will put at the forefront in a few Absolutely. weeks. Absolutely. So, as you rightly said, uh, food systems accounts for the second largest emitter of greenhouse gases emissions after the energy sector. Many people don't realize that. And that's why we need to fix our food systems, fix our agriculture, fix our behavior when it comes to food, fix the food loss and food waste problems. So much goes into it. And I was, before getting the position as Minister of Climate Change and Environment, where food security is also embedded in our ministry, I was the Minister of State for Food Security. And already in 2017-18, we embarked as a country. We have um, the national strategy for the country. We've invested heavily in technologies. In those days when I started, uh, we didn't have any ag tech companies. Now we have nearly 200 ag tech companies. So these are companies that basically recirculate the water in a closed environment and we're able to grow many high value foods in the desert. So I don't know if any of you have tried any of the blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, they are most probably grown here in the desert. And this is something we couldn't have uh, done without the power of innovation and technology. So companies now are seeing it's commercially viable to do that. Um, and this is the excitement of changing our food systems. And why I also mentioned behavior, it really comes down to us as people as well. How much food or edible food is going into the bin at the end of the day? Now, I've been a big advocate of food systems and I promised everyone I would make sure that food systems has center stage at COP28. 20, and thankfully, supporting also the COP28 uh, presidency, I am the food lead and uh, food will have center stage on the first day uh, of the uh, leaders summit. Um, and we're so excited because I've worked with many of you as partner countries, as experts on the food systems agenda. And there were two things that I was hearing from everyone. We need an agenda and we need political will. So the agenda I announced in July in Rome at the UN Food Systems Summit. What's the agenda? It's basically four pillars getting political will, getting non-state actors on board, scaling up finance into food systems, and focusing on innovations. Those are the main four pillars. And on pillar number one, political will, we have managed, as many partner countries, to put together a declaration. This declaration is called the Emirates Declaration for Resilient Food Systems, Sustainable Agriculture and Climate Action. I know it's long, but this is what the partners wanted. And it's been sent out to all the countries already a week ago to get endorsement. And I hope and I plan that at COP28, I will be able to announce many countries who have endorsed this, meaning that their countries have said, yes, the political will is there. I'm going to make sure food systems is part of my NDC, which is what Laurent spoke about, the national determined contributions. My food systems, I'm going to make sure it's in our national biodiversity strategies. And I'm going to make sure my food systems is also part of our national adaptation programs. So this is what the declaration of, is about. It's a two-pager, and it's just building that political will that we need to transform food systems. I also just want to add something about the energy. You were talking about a switch. I often ask people, do you know how much energy you need to build a solar panel? Do you know how much energy you need to build a turbine for a wind turbine? It's so much energy. You cannot do that with the renewable energy you have today. So it's so important you use the energy systems of today to build the energy systems of tomorrow. And that's why trebling renewable energy, the UAE is on a pathway to treble its renewable energy by 2030, but other countries need help. They need technical help, they need financial help. So it's really important that at COP28, we all support each other to treble 
uh, renewable energy globally, but everyone has their own challenges, and that's why we need to step up, and that's why you've seen Mazdar is now in so many countries really stepping up uh, their knowledge, their financial means that they can put into this. Uh, but that part is so important, and that's why I always say this needs a just transition, because you need so much energy and power to build the future energy systems of tomorrow. And the importance, of course, of multilateralism in this regard and building synergies to align these responses to climate change, as you just pointed out, are very, very critical indeed. Uh